I want you to marry her, but if if you can't, like I understand, because like you, you think, were raised as siblings. Like if you think of her as a sister, and I, Victor's just sitting there going, "Dad, that's the best part." <laughs> <laughs> like the scene from Joe Dirt. <laughs> you're my sister. You're my sister. This podcast is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Spoiler warning for whatever is in the title of this episode. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow Daniel at DStarSick on Twitter. Follow Ryan at Darth Damio on the Bluebird app. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher, and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that The Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Welcome to episode 54 of The Horror of Babylon, where we are discussing Junji Ito's Frankenstein. I am Ryan, and with me as always is Daniel. Say hi, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. And we want to give a shout out to our patrons who support the show. Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and... Logan, the Full Metal Patron. <laughs> okay, so I'd never read this manga before. How did you come across it? I'm a big Junji Ito fan, and I was reading a lot of his stuff and buying a lot of his stuff. And when I was in Amazon and I typed in Junji Ito, it came up. And I was like, okay. Do they mean, like, Frankenstein Frankenstein? <laughs> and I looked it up and I was like, it was allegedly like an actual adaptation. Yeah. Which so, it is. Until, until it is. Not, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was so excited to talk about it. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, okay, so this is by Junji Ito, and we, this is not the first time we've covered him before. Mm -hmm. So if you want to hear more about our individual backgrounds with him mm -hmm. or more details, go back to our Gyo episode, and we d discuss a lot more about him specifically in his life and, and such. And once uh, Uzumaki drops, we'll probably be doing like a weekly watch of that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and th Frankenstein is the 16th volume in the horror world of Junji Ito series. Of course, it is an adaptation of Mary Shelley's novel, Frankenstein. It was originally published in Japan in three parts from 1994 to 1998, and the collected edition was first published in Japan in 1998. It was published in the United States in 2018 with a bunch of his short stories as Frankenstein Junji Ito story collection. And I'll go ahead and tell you that I didn't realize it had a bunch of short stories with it. So as I'm reading it, like it's getting to like the end of the story and, and I'm like, how the hell is there so much more? And then I look, oh, there's a bunch of other stuff in here. <laughs> I, I, I was conflicted of whether or not I should tell you because I also didn't know. I I didn't I didn't realize it until it was almost over. Yeah. Like I'm getting there going is he just going to like add a bunch? Yeah, <laughs> it was like what the fuck is going to happen? Yeah. Okay, so let's jump into structure and themes and just kind of talk about it as an adaptation. And as I'm I'll, I'll tell you as I was reading this I was kind of super conflicted. I was going back and forth between this is amazing and this is kind of disappointing. <laughs> That's a great descriptor for this. I was like, wow, th this is such a true adaptation. And then I was like, wow, this is such a true adaptation. This is this is such a uh, loving uh, homage to the original work, too. wonder why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, the big difference is that if you haven't read the novel, but you have read this, uh, the monster blackmails Victor into creating another female creature for him. Which, and, I, which I love was included. Yeah. In the novel, Victor starts to do this, realizes that it's a mistake, and, and then stops and destroys all his work. Of course, in the manga, 
He goes through with it. <laughs> yeah, he makes it. He makes it. The monster brings him the head of, of his, Justine. Uh, of Justine. <laughs> Which was like, I did a double take. I was like, wow, they're really, really going to do this. They're really going to make it. Oh, he's going to bring a head. That's, Holy fuck, that's Justine! <laughs> yeah, and his buddy, Henry. Henry. <laughs> oh my god. Is there and helps him build this thing. <laughs> Which is, I was just like, Shocked. That was that was the thing that I was talking about where I was going. I can't wait for Ryan to get to this specifically. Okay, so I'll tell you. Up until that part, I was bouncing back and forth between whether I liked it or not, and I had to read it in a couple settings. So, kind of my thinking was like, I like this, but I'm going to be honest with you. If you're going to have a outrageous artist like Junji Ito adapt something, I kind of want him to do something outrageous with it and then he did something outrageous <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not sure if I want this or not <laughs> Um, that, that's actually something I wanted to bring up because you know me, I've like sucked Junji Ito's dick over his art so much mm -hmm. and honestly his Frankenstein design came off as a little tame to me yeah, I mean, it was... Like, he, he got, like, the size right, and, like, you could... I thought he was like, even a little bigger than he was supposed to be. Like, when I'm sitting there going, I feel like it should be more gross if Junji Ito is doing this. Yeah. My my favorite pieces in the art were actually usually, like, Victor or Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite panel in the entire thing is when... Uh, the the graveyard keeper is going into the crypt and then you see Victor coming he's, up he's covered covered. <laughs> covered in blood yeah I think that's uh, my favorite it was a ghoul <laughs> yeah but it it's hard because like if you're adapting Frankenstein and you're eschewing Boris Karloff Frankenstein as a as an inspiration like if you're pretending that never happened mm -hmm. if you just go based off of her words. It's so vague. Yeah. It, it's hard to really... I mean, it's just difficult. I, I can't say really more than that. I like that he built his own brain. How do you feel about the fact that he fights bears? <laughs> and he, he eats bears. He's not a vegetarian. I yeah. don't know why that was changed, but... Uh, that, was, that, that, that gets me to like one of my, like I guess, overarching points is... In, in the original novel, you got, like, who's really the monster? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't give you a clear-cut answer. Mm -hmm. It kind of gives you, like, arguments for both sides. Right. Usually coming from each side. Yeah. And this, it kind of implies a lot like the, like, 1931 movie that just by their nature that this is so wrong that they're going to end up bad. Like, when the Justine Frankenstein monster... Yeah. Gets a, what's the first thing she does? Is stab somebody. Yep. It's a little... It's less gray than the novel. It's a little more black and white. And this, and this was sort of strange because it really kind of leaned into like the monster being the bad guy, mm -hmm. which isn't the route that I would expect Junji Ito to take. Yeah, they're coming to get you, Barbara. Let's jump into characters, and then we can get more specific on e on each of these. Let's so let's talk about Victor. I I felt like. Of all the characters, Victor was the one who was most truly adapted. He was done justice, I think. He didn't have, like, as many... Like, the latter end of the novel, I feel like I'm less sympathetic for Victor. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really have that same feeling for him here. Yeah. I felt like he was trying more to, you know, actually save his family. Yeah, like he actually made the bride. <laughs> yeah. I think my favorite part of Victor is when he's just like down with all the bodies and he just goes, hey, I discovered how to make life down here. <laughs> Ain't that wild? <laughs> and that's kind of how the manga plays it. It's like, yeah. he's just like literally hanging out with corpses going, oh, so that's how you create life. And then I'm a genius. I wanted to bring this up when we were talking about the 1910 movie, but this is also a really original creation. It's, it's like, I'm going to fill six mason jars full of gasoline and then plug them into this it, it's not gasoline yeah but you don't know what it is but it's just like it's like he gets he makes the body like normal yeah. but he gets all these jars with some kind of mysterious liquid and then injects them into the thing it is like the 1910 movie it was very alchemic yeah so i, I had never seen 
an adaptation of the creation like that before is very so, original. So I also I also really like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I thought of all the characters, Victor was was probably the best. And just like 1931, the one that is the most different is, of course, the creature, because he's so much rougher around the edges. He he seems much more monstrous, more villainous. Like wrestling and eating a bear. <laughs> My favorite part is when he throws that paw of the bear's paw to Victor. He's like, here, eat this bear's paw. Yeah, it's no big deal. <laughs> I'm just gonna... I, I, I think that's very comic booky. Yeah. Like, like we just did a, a, a freak show on power scaling. And, uh, well, the monster's stronger than a bear. <laughs> So Victor obviously ain't going to wrestle him. <laughs> it is. They do up the size a little bit, I think, which does help a little bit with the fear factor, at least for me, because I'm afraid of, of giants. I'm afraid of big people. and The things that will just eat you. Yeah. I mean, there's literally, like, if you had to fight this guy, there's, like, literally nothing you could do in a realistic situation. All right, look, what are you going to do, Victor? Take out your saber? <laughs> poke him? <laughs> poke you? I poke you? I'd like I'm not even sure like shooting him with unless you like got him like right in the throat or right like in the eye to go into the brain like I feel like you'd have to shoot him a lot yeah or like point blank in the face like yeah. if you took like a a 19th century gun and you shot him at 10 paces like it might just like bounce off <laughs> what about Justine like did you obviously you didn't but like just, of all the characters, Justine was going to be the one whose importance would be multiplied. Yeah, <laughs> that that was sort of interesting. I, I I honestly kind of liked that. I did too because I I really like Justine's story in the novel, and that's really the point where you kind of start to lose sympathy for Victor mm -hmm. because he does very little to to almost nothing to help, to help her. her yeah. yeah, and it. He he takes her story and makes her so much more important than this. It was kind of out of left field, but I liked it. Yeah, I uh, I, I also liked like the dream sequence of the head getting chopped off for the monster to bring the head back. And this is what I'm talking about, where the monster feels so much more malevolent, because this is obviously him going, "Ha, you know what I mean?" Like, yeah, like he's he's trolling him. Yeah, he's mocking you. Uh, Henry is his importance is also amplified a little bit. It elevated a lot of people. It, it, about the only person I feel it didn't elevate that it probably should have would have been like Elizabeth. Yeah. Although this is the only adaptation that I've come across where they're, they are still cousins. Hot. Hot. Super hot. Winston. Hot cousins. But in, actually, in the book, they're not yeah, even, they're not even, even really cousins. Related. They just call them cousins. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, she's more like a foster sister than a cousin. She is his foster sister, yeah. essentially. I, I think they even bring that up in the book. Is it that you've come to think of her as a sister? <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, uh, Because there's a scene in this manga where <laughs> his dad pulls him aside. He's like, y I want you to marry her, but if, if you can't, like, I understand. Because like you, you were raised as siblings. Like, if you think of her as a sister, and I, Victor's just sitting there going, Dad, that's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> like the scene from Joe Dirt. <laughs> you're my sister! You're my sister! <laughs> Uh. Would it help if you still thought I was your sister? I ain't, I ain't no white trash, Rip. Jesus Christ. Oh, it's so hot. Kill you all! <laughs> I'll drive you crazy and I'll kill you all! I'm every nightmare you ever had. I am your worst dream come true. I'm everything you ever were afraid of. So jumping to scary shit, I think the art, although some things weren't what I really thought they would or should be like there were portions of this that I thought were great where I mentioned earlier with Victor coming out of the crypt carrying the, like the bag of bones and the that scene is really great as uh, much as I was expecting more from the monster I was actually kind of happy with the uh, like, for lack of a better word the bride with the Justine Frank yeah she monster. she was like it, it she almost looked like something out of Nightmare Before Christmas yeah to me like, uh, a, like she looked much more like a mismatch of uh, parts. Yeah. Probably because we knew the head. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, which was weird. Yeah. God, I just, I want, I want to know, like, how he thought of, like, including Justine in that way. Does he just, he was just, like, laying in his bed listening to the Beatles. And I was just like, you know, it would be fucked up <laughs> if the 
monster dug up Justine and brought the head to Victor. Yeah, every time I think of Junji Ito, I think of his reaction videos to scary <laughs> shit on the internet. Yeah. That was very scary. I like its design. <laughs> <laughs> so he, I just feel like he sits there and he looks at stuff going, what can I attach to what? <laughs> So he's looking at, like, the pieces he has in Frankenstein. He's like, oh, yeah, Justine existed, but she doesn't anymore. (laughs) I don't know why that's my Japanese accent. Yeah. Yeah. No, mine mine is not better, (laughs) Yeah, as we learned earlier. Did you think this comic was scary? Uh, I think there were parts that got a little under my skin. We brought up the Justine thing. Yeah. I thought that was pretty good. I don't think Frankenstein is, like, a story is as scary to me in a modern sense other than the monster being a very tall man yeah which i find scary that that eats bears yeah (laughs) uh no i I mean it's not super scary oh my god are you stephen king no i'm dean Koontz. oh What's your king? The Justine head. <laughs> uh, my king is uh, Victor covered in blood emerging from the crypt that I was just a little shook. It was just a little, cool. a little shook. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Koontz. Uh, my Koontz was it was an adaptation until it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's mine, but I'm not sure I really like that change, but I maybe I prefer him doing something outrageous and different to the the first two thirds of the book where it's just I'm just gonna literally adapt it and it's just gonna be the same story but in my art style yeah I don't know like it's really hard to say because you... uh, I guess what I was expecting was for it to be because I was told it was kind of almost a straight adaptation which it is until it doesn't and I guess what I was expecting was for him to uh, take a straight adaptation and tell the horror just through his art instead of just the story. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I I will say that this story had less, like, big set pieces than, like, something like Yo did. Yeah. Where it really used the art to mo- to tell the story. I think this might be the most tame I've ever seen Junji Ito's art. Which, and I have, which is weird to say. Me too, but I haven't read nearly as much of his work as you have. Yeah. But, I mean, like, Yo just moves from, like, one beautiful set piece to it. Well, one terrible, gross, disgusting set piece to another. I would say Yo is very standard for the kind of crazy stuff that you expect to see. And the kind of detail. Prior to the whole Justine thing, my opinion was like, I like this, but I, I kind of wish he would have been a little more outrageous with it. Mm-hmm. And then it gets super outrageous, and I'm like, oh, like, take it back. Like, the most outrageous change he had made was eating a bear. Yeah. Which we've brought up so many times, but it's like... Because it's like like the second most memorable thing in this. Yeah, like it sticks out. Yeah. We Did we mention anything about, about the boat, the archangel? No, but that, I did... I did enjoy that he adapted that framing device. I I was super pumped reading that part of it, and I loved them just like seeing him sitting on the ice, just like waiting for a, a taxi to come by. <laughs> yeah. Are you heading north or south? I guess I die here. <laughs> if you go south, I will ask you to leave me a boat, and I will continue on. Like you are insane. <laughs> I am driven by nothing but rage. Yeah, but it, uh, what I'd like to know is like. Okay, let's say they go south, they put him in a lifeboat and let him go on. Let's say he actually lives and he actually finds the monster. What the fuck does he think he's going to do? <laughs> Fisticuffs. <laughs> Come on. Either I die or you do. And the monster's just like, really? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I wonder if he had, like, he's Batman and, and the monster Superman and he has, like, some elaborate Bruce Wayne-esque plan to, to you, defeat him. You know what I kind of picture? Uh... Have you, like, actually watched a Dark Souls boss fight? The first one in the first game. A lot of it is, like, a really big creature, and you're a little small dude, and you dodge roll behind them, and you smack them in the booty. Mm. Hmm. So he's going to dodge roll behind the monster. And fisticuffs. Punch his butt. (laughs) Yeah. I don't think punching his butt is going to do anything. Until the HP part goes to zero. (laughs) You're going to have to do that like 500 times. Victor is on a challenge run. He's doing a no weapons run. (laughs) Poor Victor. (laughs) I mean Henry. Not. (laughs) (laughs) 
All right, rank. Uh, I have not ranked this one ahead of time, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and go through my list real quick. Okay, this is I, this list is a little shorter than our other ones. Yeah. So at from the bottom, uh, Master of the Future, The Sad Tale of the Principal Post, The Stand, Gyo, Gotham by Gaslight, Domu, Mermaid Saga, The Enigma of Amagara Fault. This does not touch uh, really the top five. Here. No. Um, the stand, I, I think I like better. <laughs> I think for what it is, it, it's hard to say. The, the, the sad tale of principal po post is hard because it's like four pages long. Yeah. So I guess I'm going to put it below the stand and above the sad tale of the principal post. Maybe the sad tale of the principal post is better for what it is. Yeah. But but it's it's hard to really you know just because it's so short. Mine also goes above the sad tale of the principal post and below Gotham by Gaslight. Okay, yeah. I think that's a fair ranking for what this is. You can call this a classic or even like a uh, essential Junji to read and after reading it. I would recommend probably every of it, one of his short story collections that I own over this. It hasn't been animated, has it? What, Frankenstein or yeah. the, it's Frankenstein. the Junji Ito one? Frankenstein. The Junji Ito Frankenstein. I don't believe so. Because he has, like, those anthology anime series. He also has a Netflix series coming out that I was thinking maybe we could squeeze in somewhere. Just yeah, to I mean, yeah. I mean, like, because it'd be content. We could, like, watch the episodes and then come talk about them. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Um, but in its defense, like unlike like our TV and movies list, I like everything on our comics list. The worst thing was Master of the Future, which, yeah. which wasn't bad. It, it, just, it was just in the same book as Gotham by Cast. Yeah. Right? And um, uh, I think the Sad Tale Principal Post kind of has a little bit more of a gut punch. Yeah. We haven't read a bad comic book yet. So. No. No. I'm but sure we will. We have read bad books, and we have watched bad movies and TV. And I guess the worst... Sh I think we both have Night Surf on the bottom of our short stories list, which is okay. Yeah, it's... It is what it is. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's that. It's our homework. Uh, what other classic horror story would you like to see Junji Ito adapt? Okay, now when you say classic... It doesn't necessarily have to be old. My number one is Stephen King's It. Yeah, uh, me too. Because I think that, especially over this one, would allow him to go crazier with what he puts on the page. Okay, so since we both want that, give me a, a classic as in something that is older and something modern you'd like to see him adapt, and I'll, I'll do the same. For me, for classic, I'd like to see him adapt The Invisible Man. Ooh. Because how do you have, like, the one of the most iconic visceral horror artists adapt a horror story about a man you cannot see. That would be interesting. He'd probably add, like, a lot of broken bodies. Yeah. Okay, so, like, so classic, classic. I'm probably gonna have to go with just Dracula. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, because I think he could, you know, Dracula has transformation scenes that you don't actually get to see in the book, or they don't talk, because they, they don't see him turn into the bat. Hmm. But I feel like he would, like, put that kind of stuff onto the page. For something more modern, I'd like to see him do something that has almost no dialogue. So the first thing I, I thought of was the was A Quiet Place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just think it'd be, it'd be cool to something that have him do something that's, like, almost completely visual. Like, almost no no actual reading. My, my answer is going to be a little controversial. Uh, nothing but black and teeth. Because I think he would make me enjoy it more. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, I think almost it, it would be hard to make it worse. Yeah. I think I could make it worse. I think you could make it better. No, but I think if I tried, I could make oh, it worse. Oh, yeah. You, you, If you tried, you can make it worse. Yeah. Because, again, it's a very, like, steeped in Japanese story. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he... He already has that sort of connection to his culture. He's written those sorts of stories before. He, and he is Japanese. Yeah. There's a lot of interesting ideas in there. And a lot of them, I think, would look a lot better not as words and not coming from a first-person narrative perspective. I think he would write it as, you know, third-person, omniscient. It was a comic book. Right. You might get, like, some uh, dialogue boxes like, oh, this was the day we went to the the thing for the wedding. And then you get to see, like... 
how Junji Ito draws the temple yeah. and draws the dank water and draws the bride and then draws the Oni like moving through the painting. Yeah. I think that would be a very interesting adaptation. I think something else that would be cool would be to see him to do uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh, that'd be so good. I'd love to see like his contrast between the two. Like, yeah. like what's your, what's your uh, flip switch, Junji? Even if he didn't do an adaptation like i'd love to see him do like a character design for jekyll and for hyde and see like what the contrast is that'd be cool i'm trying to think of some more because st- i'm trying to stick to uh, st- some stuff that we've read that we've both read so that you know elkhead woman i think that <laughs> I, I don't think that i think that'd also be pretty good well and he could do it but localize it in J- japan and use the ainu yeah yeah no that might be a little insulting to the people the story's actually about, but still, it would be cool. Well, I mean, it's not, the, it's not the same. But there is a similar treatment of the Ainu people. To to indigenous people in America, the, the, for sure. The, there, there are certainly parallels. Yeah. Um, I think that would be kind of interesting. Yeah. It, like, if you wanted to, like, look, if you didn't want to, like, make an American comic, or, like, one set in America, he could do that. I think like pulling like the baby elk out of the the woman's body, like oh. we would get a very visceral image of that. Oh, that'd be scary. Uh, so that'd be another really good one. And we know from Gyo that he can do like very accurate drawings of animals. Yeah, he's very good at that. I really want to watch uh, Golden Conway some more. Yeah, me too. I was actually thinking about rewatching it this week. Um, how do you pronounce it? The I knew people. I knew. Yeah. Okay. Uh. There's a, a Netflix series, uh, Jew on Origins, and the ending has a very, very eerie Gets Under My Skin song, which is apparently a traditional I knew, like, him, I guess, that uh, the director, I guess, put in there to be, help be part of, like, a cultural preservation because the language is dying out. Mm-hmm. So. That's sad. Yeah. I just thought that was interesting. So for further reading, uh, I want to recommend some things that, you know, don't necessarily have anything to do with Frankenstein or Junji Ito or, or even horror. But if you just, if you were taken aback by the fact that there's a manga adaptation of Frankenstein, there are manga adaptations and biographies of so many things. So I have read uh, manga biographies of Helen Keller, Anne Frank, um, Albert Einstein. Beethoven, Genghis Khan. Did and, somebody do the Buddha? And Che Guevara. Che Guevara. And I, there's one on the Buddha that I've read. Osama Tezuka did eight volumes on the Buddha. And I have not read, but exists, the manga story of Jesus Christ. Uh, there's one on Adolf Hitler, which I really want to read, but have not gotten to read yet. I bet uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, Kanye's favorite manga. <laughs> uh, so just like there's there's manga out there about almost anything uh, you can think of under there are manga adaptations of all three of the original Star Wars movies and Phantom Menace which I've read all of those as well I bet the uh, Star Wars is a good place for that kind of stuff yeah I, I actually like them a lot I enjoy them quite a bit it's why I think Star Wars Visions was such like an inspired idea yeah I mean well like, Star Wars was a lot of Lucas's inspiration was Japanese movies, yeah, especially like Seven Samurai and yeah. uh, the Kira Kurosawa stuff, and yeah, which are, there's a lot of those movies on HBO Max. I didn't even know until I was browsing the other day. Now my entire like queue uh, queue is just old Japanese movies. Yeah, I I want I my queue has a lot of that stuff on it too. The issue is I watch a lot of movies while I'm working, yeah, so it's hard to watch subtitled stuff. And sometimes when they do it, if they do a dub for some of these movies. It's not good. Yeah. It, it's not good. Sometimes I think it's insulting to the actors. Yeah. At the same time, I have a very hard time paying attention. It's why I watch... I, I almost exclusively watch anime and dub. I do now. Because it's hard for me to pay attention. When I was younger, I watched a lot of subtitles. But these days, I, I do almost exclusively dub. I do Godzilla exclusively in dub, but I think it makes the movies better. <laughs> I saw Shin Godzilla with subs in theaters. Mm-hmm. And 
subtitles for me are a lot easier in theaters because I don't have to move my head. Yeah, a big screen helps a lot. Yeah. So that was a great experience. I still haven't seen Shin Godzilla. It's so good. We should just do a bonus episode on it. We should do a bonus episode on Shin Godzilla. A lot of my queue on HBO Max is also just Godzilla movies they happen to have. Question for the listeners is, is the same. Let us know uh, what you, what other horror stories you think Junji Ito you know, should adapt. And uh, upcoming on the horror of Babylon next week, we are going to do our final Frankenstein episode, reviewing two films: Mary Shelley's Frankenstein from 1994 and Victor Frankenstein from 2015. And then the following week, we are starting Dracula. And then the next week, we are doing our first Dracula adaptation, which will be a Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Last. Sunday in January, we are going to cover the short story Dracula's Guest by Bram Stoker. And then the next Sunday, we're going to cover the new film, The Last Voyage of the Demeanor, which is one of two new Dracula adaptations coming out in 2023. Comes out that soon, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Me too, me too. All right, well, uh, thank you for uh, recording with me tonight. I had a fantastic time. Me too. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Stay tuned for our socials and stay scary. Stay scary, everybody. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow Daniel at DStarSick on Twitter. Follow Ryan at Darth Damio on the Bluebird app. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher, and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that The Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Stay scary.